you, you enjoy outdoor life and, and that experience is, is, is an important feature of your life but it's also part of what people come here for. And uh, two weeks ago we saw a golden eagle. I mean the, the amount of wildlife that's drawn to this area and it wouldn't be drawn if it were not for the water and uh, the open spaces that we've, we've retained. And it's, uh, it's a great part of my life. Well, Chip, you know, we're down here by the Verde River. Uh, it looks like there's some uh, kayakers in the background. And what, what makes this river and the water resources of the Verde River Basin so important to you? I know you've been involved in them for a long time. Well, Tom, as a fourth generation Arizona, and I've watched the state gradually grow and, and develop. And uh, the Verde River and the Verde River Basin is one of Arizona's last wilderness areas. It's one of the last real pieces of the true frontier. We have running water, we have grasslands, we have riparian areas. Uh, it's very important to the United States and to the state of Arizona and to Yavapai County. And, and what, what is it you, that makes it so unique? I mean, there's rivers in other places in the state and there's rivers uh, in other areas of the Southwest, but what makes this so important? I think the unique thing about the Verde River in Arizona is it has water in it. <laughs> uh, it's got such a diverse wildlife, such a diverse uh, birding, nesting habitat. It's, uh, it's both good for nature and uniquely, it's very good for the communities of Yavapai County. Well, it's more than just the Verde River, the basin. I mean, there's surface waters uh, that lead into the Verde that are some of the most significant scenic waterways in the entire nation. Yes, the uh, all of the tributaries that come into into the Verde River are unique and beautiful. Um, the threats that are upon them are sometimes feel insurmountable and. Uh, I'm very happy that the partnership is putting together this program to address the issues and bring them to the forefront. Well, you mentioned the partnership, the Verde River Basin Partnership, but long before the partnership, you and others have been working on this issue about how do we sustain and preserve the Verde River and what are the threats to it and how do we come together cooperatively as a, as a region to, to, to be able to protect it. And, and uh, what's that struggle been like and, and where does it go from here? The struggle is between science and politics. And ideally, uh, you're being a past Arizona State Senator, you understand the value of having good information, good education, good research, and, and tying that into political policy making. And I think my frustration lately has been is our failure to adopt the research and the uh, information that's come out through studies and try to apply it to policy and what we've chosen to do is to ignore the science and continue with our old ways of develop 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 without uh, taking into consideration how to do it smartly sustainably what are the next steps you know the, the United States Geological Survey just came out with a some information that uh, the base flow the the, the basic water that we see day in and day out in the Verde, uh, other than rain, rain runoff and snow melt, is at risk. Uh, where do we go from here and how do we get people involved? Well, I think recognition of the impacts to the river, the potential impacts to the river, and then how do we apply the latest technology uh, to address those issues. There's long time been a, a, a divide between environmentalists and developers. And when we've really broke down the issue, we've found that both sides really have things in common. The river draws people to want to live here, which is good for development. Uh, it draws tourism in, which is good for our economy. And so we have mutual interest of the value of the river. Uh, sometimes conflict evolves in, uh, do we want to not change our ways or I would think that we could. I would think that we can change our building practices. Uh, we can change our, our sprawl habits that we've had and we can still grow at safe, uh, healthy rates and have great healthy communities and not impact the river. 
I think what our failure is, is that we are, are failing to recognize that the Verde River has potential negative impacts and we are not doing things to address it. We are not changing our ways.